we're about to head off to Flaming Gorge National Recreation Area and they don't have there's no hookups there so where we're staying and there's no dump station either so of course we've totally dumped our tanks and everything so we got to go there with empty tanks and we have to fill up our fresh water so what we did is sanitized our fresh water system while we were here and so we are now totally filling it up we got about 80 miles to go i normally don't go with a full tank but here we may not be able to get water so we are going to fill up our fresh water all the way and so when we get there we have plenty of fresh water we're going to be dry camping for like nine consecutive days here so you know our batteries are 100 percent charged we're plugged in here but of course going down the road our alternator is going to our uh, 48 volt alternator is going to be charging those batteries. So when we get to the campground, we should be 100%. Um, so we ought to be in real good shape, but we're going to bring you along and kind of show you how this thing works out. And uh, we're excited to go to a new place. So stick around. Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Stacy. I'm Tom and we're RV Texas y'all. We are native Texans and full-time RVers who are all about exploring the great state of Texas and beyond one campground at a time. We're on a mission to experience life, not just live it, and we're bringing you along for the fun. In 2018, we sold our house, our business, and got rid of most everything we owned to hit the road and see America. Our home is a 33-foot RV named Freedom. We installed an extreme solar and lithium setup so now we can just about live anywhere with our dog Star and our cat Astro. Every day is a new adventure, so join us as we RV America, y'all. Okay, like I said earlier, we don't have a long distance to go today, but I want to top off our fuel. Um, so we'll have a fuel, full fuel tank in case we need to run our generator. So this is day two of our epic nine-day boondocking adventure. <laughs> we are in the Canyon Rim Campground. This is part of the Ashley National Forest, which is part of Flaming Gorge Recreation Area in Northeast Utah. That's a mouthful. Uh, we got here yesterday, it was about 2.30 in the afternoon, and it was pretty warm. So we ran both of our air conditioners off of our batteries for a few hours till it cooled down a little bit. Uh, then, just to make sure we weren't going to go too low in the night, because you never know, you might need to run the air conditioners at night to be comfortable, and that's why we have the system that we have, and we'll talk more about that later in the video. But we went ahead and ran the generator for a little bit, just to boost the batteries up to 80%. Turned everything off, went to bed, uh, had a great night, and this morning, We've had, during the day, it's about, uh, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon again, so we've been here about 24 hours. Uh, we've had intermittent clouds and sun today, uh, but the solar's doing great. Now, yesterday, solar didn't seem to be doing so good, and we took us a little bit to figure it out, but Tom realized that we actually have breakers uh, that operate our two solar grids and communicate that they're on or they're off, where we can actually turn a solar grid off if we want to. One of those breakers had popped, so we were only getting half of our solar yesterday. So figured that out today, he reset the breaker. We're getting our full two panel grid system or two grids. <laughs> we have 12 panels on the roof. Uh, and so we're getting our full solar intake today. It's been charging the batteries up nicely. I think we're back to about 80 percent even though higher oh we're, higher yeah we're past 81 percent we're past 81 percent and we have not run the generator at all uh since yesterday evening so yeah it's working out great and what a beautiful beautiful place so so far so good Day two. <laughs> Okay, day three update. 
Let's go back to day two that Stacy talked to you about. But all of day two, we did not uh, run the generator at all. And, and all night, we haven't run the generator uh, back to the first day we got here. That's when we ran the generator. Um, so we went strictly off solar yesterday and then today. We, however, after all of our neighbors left this morning, which we're still the only ones in this entire area, and this is early evening, um, we uh, tried, decided to try out our alternator. So we started the engine and just ran it for 30 minutes and our batteries were at 59% there. And in 30 minutes, we went from 59% up to 78% and then we cut that off and just went with our solar and our solar was charging the batteries nicely. Um, and then the solar got us up to about 84% and, and then it was early afternoon and Stacy and I wanted to go uh, to the damn visitor center. And yes, I said that right. It's the Flaming Gorge Dam Visitor Center. <laughs> so as we go, you know, we, uh, Star and Astro have to stay in the coach. So we turned the AC on. We, we'd had the windows off, uh, uh, the windows open, but we closed all the windows, turned the AC on. And um, it did great. It did great. We're back from that now. We were gone about three and a half hours. The coach did great. Um, we're still, our batteries I think are at like 72%. So they're in great shape. We're about to go grab some dinner and um, you know, we're just gonna keep it going here. I mean, uh, I, we won't have to do the generator today either. So uh, we'll let you know how the night goes, but everything's been going great. Um, and uh, the system is working perfectly. <laughs> okay, so one way we're able to make our fresh water go a little further is in the campground here, they have water spigots and this is potable water. So for our drinking water, We're filling this up for our drinking water. And we use this, we take it in and I'll show you, we run it through our Berkey for fresh water. Now, again, not just power is what you have to worry about when you're boondocking, you gotta worry about your tanks. Your fresh water tank, your black and gray tanks. So, here in this park, there are no showers. So you got to take those quick showers and stuff because you don't have that option. But what you do have an option of here is vault toilets. Um, there's one just down the way, but that can save your black tank uh, by using the vault toilets. So help your black tank go a little bit further. Luckily, most of the time we haven't had to use that. We've been able to use our own. And uh, so now we're going to go in and put this into the Berkey and uh, for our drinking water. And of course, probably in past videos, you've seen our Berkey and we use this no matter where we're at. Even when we're hooked up, uh, doesn't matter. We filter all of our water because different campgrounds, different places, the water tastes differently. Uh, so we want good, fresh, clean water every time. And the Berkey keeps it very consistent. Voila. Day four of our epic boondocking adventure. We are still here in the Flaming Gorge National Recreation Area in Northeast Utah. Absolutely loving it. Yesterday we went out and did a little bit more exploring. We went to the uh, Flaming Gorge Dam, which by the way, we're gonna have 
videos specifically on these places that we are where we're filming this video and, and including things that we did while we were in the area. We're gonna have separate videos on that, so make sure you're subscribed and come back to see because, oh my gosh, these places are pretty darn amazing. Anyway, so we went out and uh, explored a little bit more yesterday. It's been getting pretty warm during the day still. This is, this is August, and uh, so when we leave, we wanna make sure that Star and Astro, our dog and our cat, are safe and comfortable. And that's a big deal for us, and that's a big reason why we invested in our 48 volt lithium battery bank and the whole system that came along with that. And if you haven't seen the video on that, I'll link that in the description so you can see exactly how we're set up. But it allows us to run our air conditioners from our batteries, which they are a big reason why we did that. So uh, we closed everything up, made sure they were comfortable, had the ACs running, came back, and uh, after a few hours, everything was good. But the whole evening yesterday, late afternoon, uh, evening, most of this morning, we've been pretty cloudy. I think the max we've gotten in solar wattage uh, in that time is about 850 watts. So we're right now at about 58 or 59 percent on our battery bank, which we have a big battery bank, so that's not really a problem at all. Um, but uh, when we had our old coach and we had lead acid batteries, that would begin to worry us because you can't let those lead acid or gel batteries get below 50 percent because it might damage them. With lithium, we're good and we've got a big bank, so that's not a problem. But we do keep an eye on that as we're boondocking, even with this system. Uh, what we have found really helps keep things cooler while we're in camp here is our uh, window awnings that we had installed on this coach. This is the first coach we've done that on. All of our RVs in the past, we had regular awnings, but we did not have window awnings. We find that that really helps block the sun during the heat of the day coming from certain side, you know, east or west. Um, so we've been putting those out and using those. When we are here in camp, when Tom and I are physically here, we don't have the air conditioning air conditionings running. Uh, we just open up all the windows that we can, have our 12 volt fans running, and we like to sit outside and enjoy nature anyway. And that's where our big awnings here on our camping side really come into play because it gives us some shade. And we are parked facing north so that in the afternoon, uh, the sun is actually blocked by our rig itself. So we get even more shade from that afternoon sun. So that's been awesome. But yeah, things are going great. We are uh, really excited to explore a little bit more today. We may have to run the generator later, just depending on how these clouds do us and how our battery bank uh, does this afternoon before we get into the night. By the way, the nights, sometimes have been getting into the 50s uh, here. Uh, again, this is August in Northeast Utah in the National Forest. But I actually have some um, little fans that I'll show you later in the video that we invested in while after a boondocking experience left us with no breeze at night uh, that really helps circulate the air when you need a little extra assistance uh, to be comfortable at night. So all good, day four. <laughs> what do you think, Star? Okay, we're at the beginning of day five and we're heading down to Dinosaur and we needed, uh, we needed to dump our tanks, which we've already done, and we gotta fill our fresh water. So we stopped at a KOA here. Uh, what, what's this town? Invernal. Invernal, very convenient. I mean, we were going right by it. We called them ahead of time, $10, that's all they charged us. So we were able to totally dump our tanks. And now we're gonna be able to fill our fresh water tank. So we'll be totally set for five more days. And you know, really, I think we could have made it. Uh, but just in case something happens and we're at Dinosaur longer than we expect, it, it's just better to go in with empty tanks and a full fresh water tank, just in case. But I think we would have made it. We got bigger tanks than we used to, and that's been nice. <laughs> 
And the reason that we're in a campsite right now is because their dump station, they have two dump stations right off of the highway, right at the front of the park, in front of the office, but they don't have potable water there. So I asked them and they said, just find any open campsite, pull in, fill your tanks, no problem. So thanks guys. Yeah. Okay, day five now. We're at Dinosaur National Monument and boy, we've changed some climate here because we've moved down in elevation uh, a few thousand feet. So it's a little warmer here, but we uh, getting here, our batteries were at about 64% when we, when we left Flaming Gorge. And um, when we got here, our alternator had us charged to 100%. And you saw that we stopped uh, to dump our tanks and everything and, and add water. So we're in great shape with that. Um, and obviously we got here at 100% and our solar is just doing awesome. Right now we have an AC on because we're going to go to the visitor center and uh, a Star and Astro are comfortable in there because we got the AC running. And uh, so right now we're using a little over 1900 watts, but our solar is bringing in a little over 1600 watts. So we're almost putting back in what we're using so our batteries they they showed that we looked at it just a second ago and they will go for three days at this same rate if it stays this way so i'd say we're in great shape a star and astro are in great shape and uh so far things are going good and we have we learned a lesson the last time you know so we didn't uh, use up a lot of our battery capacity. We still have not used the generator till the very first day we got to Flaming Gorge. So, wow, I'm liking it. Day six, and it is now about 8.15 p.m. This, it is significantly hotter here at Dinosaur National Monument than it was when we were at Flaming Gorge. Today it got up to about 97 degrees. And of course we chose our campsite here because we wanted as much access to solar as we could get. So we have really no shade in our campsite, but that's okay. The, uh, the solar is running great. We did learn a little something uh, to watch out for the, on day one, and we'll share that here a little later in this video, because we're gonna go over some tips and some learnings that we've had over this time period and also our previous time uh, boondocking. Uh, but uh, overall, it went really well. The, uh, the solar's working great. We did have to run the air conditioners today to try to keep the coach cool. We also set up our clam, so it gives us a shady area outside, and we put our little USB fans out here. Uh, and that was a nice little uh, way to spend some time as well. Uh, but you might hear in the background, we are running the generator. Now this is day six. This is the first time since day one that we've actually run the generator. And right now we are running the both air conditioners and putting a little bit more charge into the battery. Uh, battery bank. Uh, we've been running it since about six o'clock. Generator hours here uh, go on until 9 p.m. So we're going to run it for a little bit longer and then shut it off. Batteries right now are about 90 percent. We wanted to make sure that we have plenty of juice in our batteries in case we need to run the air conditioners tonight while we're sleeping because you can't run the generator at night. And if tonight is hotter then last night, like today, was hotter than yesterday, it may get pretty warm. So we might want those AC, so we wanted to be prepared. But yeah, another day down, and we are having a ball. <laughs> day seven of our dry camping experience here. Um, as Stacy told you yesterday, that we did run the generator a little bit yesterday. It's getting, it's hot in this place. It's a lot warmer here at Dinosaur than it was 
at uh, Flaming Gorge. So, you know, we're having to work through running the generator a little bit. They have generator hours here. You, you can run till 9 p.m. You, and then you have to turn them off at 9 p.m., can't turn them on till 7 a.m. Well, we ran all night with the AC on last night because it was so warm at night and it was comfortable. We were comfortable in the RV with the AC on. And so we, the batteries got down to 40 some percent overnight. Uh, so at eight o'clock this morning, we waited an extra hour. We have a bunch of tent campers on the, across the road from us, so I didn't want to wake them all up with the generator. So we waited till eight o'clock, turned on the generator, and uh, we ran the generator uh, till approximately 4.30 today because it was very cloudy today until now. I mean, it's hard to tell right now. It's sunshine and no clouds right now, but uh, it was very cloudy, so we didn't get great solar today. Uh, and it actually rained. So, but we we got the RV cooled off and then at 4.30 we turned the generator off. It's still off and it's about 6.19 right now. Uh, so we're running the ACs and actually running one AC right now. And it's doing great, keeping it cool. We had to go into town. So we went in town to get some things and actually had dinner at a at a, a brewery in town uh that was kind of cool um and but what's nice is we didn't have to worry about astro and star even though the generator was not on the batteries did their job and the inverter did its job and uh keeping it cool in there and tonight i think we're probably gonna we'll probably run the generator a little bit more to get our batteries up as far as we can we're at about 79 percent right now i think and but we want to try to get the batteries up as high as we can and then we'll we are going to run the ac tonight for sure we want to be comfortable but this is why we actually got this system because when we were at south padre uh national park uh in texas it was beautiful during the day when we were in our breeze, but at night it got still and warm and it was unbearable because we couldn't run any AC or anything. So, and couldn't run the generator at night. So that's worked great. We're learning, we're learning here and bet it's working really well. And uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna have those ACs on probably all night or at least one AC. It, it seems to work fine with one AC and uses less power. So we try to get along with one AC. If we need two, we'll run two. But uh, I think we'll run one AC tonight. We'll see how it goes. And uh, well, Stacy will give you an update tomorrow on day eight. Day eight. <laughs> wow. And now we're over a week. And we just realized yesterday as we were talking about it after we filmed our day seven update that this is actually a 10 day boondocking adventure. It's nine nights. So <laughs> we're in day eight. We're still here, still here at Dinosaur National Monument and we are enjoying the heck out of this park. So we're gonna have a whole video on this park uh, and also a video on a hike that we took today that was pretty darn amazing. So if you wanna see more about that, make sure you check out our channel. But things are going fantastic. We've had a lot of sun today. It's just now starting to cloud up. It is 6.20 in the evening. And, but most of the day it has been solid, solid sun. Last night was really comfortable. It cooled down nicely. So after about 8.45, we turned off the generator. About 8.45 last night, we turned off the generator uh, and we have not run it since. It has been, it was a really comfortable night with the windows open. And I talked earlier about the USB chargeable, rechargeable fans that we have. We actually have three different kinds. This is one of them. Just this small little, little fan 
Um, we've had, we bought this actually after our, not failed, but challenging boondocking adventure back in 2019 that Tom mentioned at Padre Island National Seashore. And we realized we needed some way to move the air around more than our 12 volt fans were giving us. So we bought a pair of these on Amazon and they work fantastic. We've added a couple of larger versions uh, to our collection since then. Thanks to some friends of ours, Rick and Robin, hey guys, who gave us one of them. Um, but they do a great job, especially at night. We've got an open window. We'll put a fan in front of the window and it helps pull the air in, even on nights when we don't have a nice breeze. So that worked out great. Today, we turned on, uh, right before we went on a hike this morning, we closed up the windows and turned on the front AC to run off of batteries no generator while we went on our hike and so star and astro were completely comfortable and cool inside and uh turned out great we are still running at about 68 percent on our batteries even though we've been running off of batteries with our air conditioner all day today so we are really loving our system um but yeah this has been we have learned a lot during this experience just like we do every time we go dry camping so I hope, uh, yeah, let's see what tomorrow brings. We're off to a ranger program here in a few minutes, so that's super exciting. Well, day nine here and almost forgot to film this clip because, hey, well, the day was kind of uneventful, really. Um, we didn't have to run the generator at all. We went all night without the, you know, we can't run the generator at night, but went all night on the batteries. And uh, they went down about 38%, but you know what? The great thing about lithium is 38% is no big deal. Um, still running solid power, they can go down almost zero and you can still charge them up, doesn't hurt the batteries. so. No big deal, we just kept running with it. Still didn't turn the generator on, let the solar go do its work, and we had a pretty clear day, and uh, got, our, got our batteries back up to 54%. So we hung here all day long with uh, Astro and Star, and this isn't gonna be the last review here. It, tomorrow is really day 10, because we stay here tonight, um, and we're gonna, you know, we're going again tonight with uh, just the batteries, of course. And uh, we'll let you know tomorrow and give you kind of some tips we've learned along the way and sum everything up. And yeah, almost forgot to do this because we were sitting down drinking a cold one and thought, oh, wow, we got to do our update. <laughs> That's great. So stay tuned for the final part uh, tomorrow. Well, uh, day 10. We made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we are back in uh, a regular RV park. We actually now are in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. There's a fantastic KOA here uh, that we'll have a future video on. Uh, this place is pretty darn, looks pretty darn amazing. Yeah, and we're in full hookups here. So yeah, we're, we're back to regular and we wanted to discuss, you know, how it all went. Of course, the final night's all we didn't report on, but we didn't turn the generator on. We just stayed on the batteries, and uh, they did they did great. We had a wonderful night. We actually, you know, we got came here without turning the generator on too. We drove all the way here. We stopped and got fuel, mm -hmm. and came here. And of course, we hadn't dumped our tanks either. So we were on our tanks as well. But we knew we were coming to a full hookup location after we left Dinosaur National Monument, and that was all by plan. So let's talk about some of the things 
that we learned not only from this experience but also from previous boondocking experiences uh, back in 2019 in case you hadn't seen our older videos we actually spent I think it was 28 out of 30 days boondocking and my mom was along with us on that trip and that's when we were in the Tiffin breeze and we had no lithium batteries and and only a couple so solar panels right we had 320 watts of solar on the breeze and four just standard lead acid nothing special batteries yep uh, and we did just fine but we learned a lot from that experience also and i think our number one learning uh over the years mm -hmm. including this time around is just because you have the ability to use something doesn't necessarily mean that you should. <laughs> Our first day this time around, when we arrived at Flaming Gorge on day one, we just weren't quite thinking enough about the boondocking experience yet, even though we were excited to be doing it again. But we got set up. We had both of our air conditioners running because we can run both of our air conditioners off of our lithium batteries. And then we took Star and Astro outside and spent an afternoon in the shade, sitting outside, enjoying the park, not even thinking about the fact that we were just running our batteries. Well, we weren't used to having that lithium. We This is a, our first major boondocking experience since we got our solar and lithium on this coach. So, yeah, we were overconfident in our system, and it did great. Ran the did exactly what it was supposed to do but um we of course once we realized we were out there for three and a half four hours we go in and we were just running our batteries for nothing i mean we weren't <laughs> inside the coach so we learned real quick and so we did and like you said we, we had to run the generator after that to help bring our batteries back up but that our main thing is, is you know, you kind of not want to know what your objective is when you're boondocking, like for your generator and stuff, if you have a generator. And because you don't have to have a generator to boondock, no. but what the generator does, well, really, the, the things you need to be aware of when you boondock is your tanks, you know, fresh water tank, and then your black and gray. Uh, always know the levels there because you got to know how much water you can still use if you can't get fresh water some of these parks you can't um, and when you can't dump obviously you can't get your black too full so those things you or have to gray. manage or you're great you have to manage all that and then the only other thing you really have to manage are your batteries doesn't matter what kind of batteries you have you still have to manage them the, the, the advantage of us having lithium now, and believe me, we absolutely love our setup, is because our batteries could drop down to almost zero and we do not damage them. And also, not only does it not damage them, but they run at the same level. Even if they're at 5%, they run like they're 100%. They give you the same amount of power and you're not hurting the batteries by being that low. And when you charge them back up, they charge up a lot faster than lead acid or gel batteries. So those two things are a big advantage for us. And we really use that big time. Um, the lead acid and gel batteries, you don't want them to drop below 50%. If you do, that's like a heart attack to those batteries. So you're damaging the battery. So you don't have near as much capacity that you're dealing with. So you have to really be a lot more mindful of of that and you're probably gonna have to run your generator more to make sure you keep those batteries above 50 percent so that's the main thing maintaining your batteries and your tanks if you do that it doesn't matter what kind of rv you have or whatever nope um and i guess you wanted to talk a little bit about know your park as you go in oh yeah so the biggest thing you really want to do especially if you're not familiar with dry camping is do a lot of research. Figure out where you want to go. Let's say you want to go to Dinosaur National Monument and camp in the Green River Campground like we did. Well, you need to know that during summer, it's often 95 plus degrees. So if you're going to do that, you want to be prepared for that. We had a fantastic time and I would totally do that again. Oh, yeah. Um, but if you don't have, let's say, solar and there's no reason to be parked in a spot 
in the full sun, then choose one of the sites that has a lot of shade. You know, maybe choose a site that your biggest window, whatever that is, whether that's in the front or the back or the side, is not facing toward the afternoon sun. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do to make your RV more comfortable, particularly in summer camping, but you just have to be prepared for that and you need to know what you're getting yourself into when you make your plans. Yeah, and it's just like Stacy for both of the, the uh, campsites that we had, they were both in full sun, right. no shade. She did a phenomenal job picking those, uh, those campsites right. because we got maximum solar and I got to tell you again, guys, loved our solar because it, it really kicked some tail. I mean, it did a good job. We got a lot of solar. In fact, one afternoon we were turning on the ACs because we were about to go take a hike or something. And the a we wanted to turn an AC on for Star and Astro. And as we go to turn it on, we were bringing in... Uh, stars reacting to another <laughs> puppy here we were bringing in more from our solar than what our ac was pulling out of the battery so and again i was talking generator before but generator could also be your solar your solar is there to charge your batteries and just like your generator you yes you can run the generator to run your acs you can do that but in our mode really we're using our generator to, if we have to, to charge our batteries, and then we're running our ACs off our batteries and right. through our inverter. Um, but you can in these parks, and a lot of them, you can have your generators all day long if you want. Not all of them. Some don't have generator hours all day long. Right. A lot of the parks will have some generator hours, maybe a couple hours in the morning or a couple hours in the evening or a little of both. Some don't allow generators at all in certain campgrounds. So again, you got to do your research yep. to know what you're getting into. When we had our breeze and back in 2019, we were staying in a lot of the parks dry camping. We had a little bit of solar, 320 watts, but we really didn't understand it. We weren't the people who had that solar installed and there really wasn't a good way to monitor what was coming in. We could monitor our battery levels and we did that. Uh, but there was no way we could run an air conditioner off of just our batteries. No, we never ran the AC, but we were um, also we um, were in places that were cooler. Right, so we chose to go into higher elevation places that historically were cooler during the time of year when we were visiting. Uh, and if we did, if it did get warm and we felt like we needed to run the air conditioner for a little while, we could do that during generator hours, and yep. we would run the generator and long enough to charge up the batteries, run the air, run an air conditioner, cool it down a little bit, and then be prepared for the evening. So there's a lot of ways to get around it. It's just about knowing your system as much as anything else. Every RV is different. And so getting to know how your RV responds to different situations and what your batteries are gonna do and how long they last in certain situations and, and your tanks as well. You know, how long can you run off of your fresh water tank before you need to resupply? Yeah, that's another thing we learned here too. Our tanks are considerably better, bigger than they were in the breeze. Right. So we can go a lot longer on our tanks, a lot longer than we thought. Um, so our tanks for us really weren't an issue and now we saved fresh water we showed you how we did that by filling the Berkey and stuff with water from the campground um, and that that helped the fresh water go further which was a a, a good move for sure um, I think there's other ways though that you can conserve that maybe we didn't talk about uh, you know you can use a lot of these campgrounds especially will have at least vault toilets or pit toilets or basically like an outhouse. Um, usually very clean. Um, so that's an option maybe during the day, especially uh, yeah. that we use. Um, also, when you go to uh, do your dishes, some of the campgrounds will have places where you can take your dishes to wash them separately. Yeah, um, so there are options, just like there, I mean, in Yellowstone, you could wash your clothes and stuff. They, yeah, they had laundry mat. Laundry mat, and they had showers too. In some of the campgrounds, they so, had showers. So just again, do your research, know where you want to go, and that will make a tremendous difference. As far as the water, I really want to point out, 
part of your research is you need to know what are you getting into. Do they have a dump station that's open? Yeah. And does that dump station, is it big enough if you look at it on Google Satellite, if you've got a larger RV, can you get in there easily um, and maneuver around? Because sometimes it's not just getting, it's not just being in the dump station, it's just like a campsite. It's not just getting in the campsite, it's getting in, a, in and around to it. Um, and do they have potable water, fresh water that you can fill with a fill station? If just not... You need to plan ahead. Just because they have water doesn't mean it's potable water. Right. You need to make for sure that it's potable water. Potable water is water you can drink. Right. Uh, Non-potable water is water that you can flush your black tank with. And right. some parks have that. You know, so if you want to flush a black tank, you can do that with non-potable water. But that's the only time you want to use non-potable water. if you are ever questioned as to if the water is potable or non-potable, always ask. Do yep. not assume that it's potable water. Even if it's painted a certain color, that yep. does not always mean that that's accurate. When we stopped at the KOA, you know, we asked, and sure enough, at the dump station was not potable water. Right. So don't assume. Make sure you know what you're getting into. I want to bring up one final thing. Okay. That was really cool. Now, our new setup and stuff, because our, the Victron has a monitor that, that uh, Master Tech put into our coach, and that monitor shows us the exact power that the solar's bringing in. It shows us the exact power that the batteries are using, so we know the amount of power we're using. So when we turn an AC on or whatever, we can see exactly how much power we're using. When we turn a fan on, we can see exactly how much more power that causes it to use. We learned, because of that, we learned that turning the fan on our ACs, you know, your ACs have fans on them. You can run, if you want to, like on high or low fan, uh, without the AC actually being on. Without the compressor running. Right, without the compressor running. So, but that, we realize, takes a lot more power than our 12-volt fans that we have, which would be called a, uh, well, it's a, a it's like a smart fan, or what are they? Uh, like a fantastic, fantastic fan. Fantastic fan, mm -hmm. and that's the your most standard, popular. Your standard RV fan, 12-volt fan. Those are 12-volt fans, and we have two of them, and we realize instead of running our AC, the fans on our ACs, and went to our 12-volt fans, we use considerably less power. And that it adds up. I mean, it's not. Uh, I mean, it's it was it was quite a bit. And over the terms of several hours, that's a lot of power. And you know, it's all about how much power you're using versus how much you're putting back into the batteries. So, it's cool though. The panel really helped us, and we love that. So, if you're looking at a lithium and solar system, you might ask to see if you could get one of those Victron monitors, especially if you're putting in. We, we have an, our inverters, a Victron inverter, uh, so we can see all of that, and it really helped it really, a lot. It really made it a lot easier to manage the system, being able to see everything right there from one panel. Uh, yep. And yes, fans, fans, fans. Yep. <laughs> get, yourself some, get yourself some rechargeable fans, and, uh, and that, even just moving that air around, really, really helps. Yep. So my gosh, we could go on forever about this. What a great experience. It was. We're gonna be doing some more dry camping coming up here very soon. Uh, in a few weeks, we'll be in Arches National Park for an entire week dry camping. Oh, that ought to be good. So we're very excited about that. We're ready for you, Arches. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any questions, make sure you leave us a comment. We'd love to hear your experience as well. Please share it with the community. Uh, things that you've learned over your years or, or times of dry camping so that we can all learn and we'll write up more on our website as well on rvtexasyall.com. Until next time y'all, don't forget to watch for these park videos because oh my gosh, they were amazing places. We'll see you next time. Safe travels. And happy camping. Bye. Bye.